Brother Gibbons' text is going to be in Acts 26, verse 18. Open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those that are sanctified by faith in me. Dear God in heaven, thank you for this day. Please help Brother Given have strength to come up and preach. Please help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Very carefully. You'll be able to hear a voice uh, coming from heaven in with an increased crescendo. And it's God calling out. He says, look unto me. Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, and be ye saved. Life for a look. How could a look accomplish such a thing as that? Because it's a look with the eye of faith. Amen. Faith can penetrate philosophical fog. Amen. It can penetrate vain religion. Yeah. It can penetrate overcast shadows of doubt. We're going to talk about faith tonight. Sanctification by faith. You, you heard the uh, text. These are the words of Jesus addressed to a chosen vessel. God told Ananias, he said, he's a chosen vessel. Now you got to see the magnitude of what Paul is charged to do. To open men's eyes. To turn them from darkness to light. This is the man being told us now. And to turn them from the power of Satan unto God. Why? that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance, forgiveness of sins, and I'll tell you right up front that this is left out of a lot of preaching. Some people think that the forgiveness of sins is like it, the sum of born of it. That's everything. It's not everything. It's the beginning of everything. Amen. And inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith is in me. That's some commission. That's some commission. And Paul didn't say, Whoo, I, I don't think I can do that. Why didn't he say that? Because he knew who was saying it. <laughs> now let's establish, um, first of all, that these words were spoken by the Lord Jesus Christ. And second, addressing my subject, sanctified by faith, they mentioned an existent condition. Them which are, not them which shall, not them which can, them which are, sanctified by faith is in me. <coughs> then let's also underscore the objective for this. It was to get people into the category of sanctified by faith. Yeah, that, that you got to get them before you're going to get off the ground. You just as well forget about being blessed and forget about being guided and forget about being directed until you get into this category. 
sanctified by faith. <coughs> going to bring them forgiveness of sins so they can get into this category. Sanctified by faith. We also understand that forgiven sin loses its power. You've got to see this. When your sins are forgiven, they've lost their power. Farewell recovery systems. Once sin is forgiven, a no will defeat Satan. Satan has no rejoinder for no. You resist the devil. How do you do? You say, no. No. He doesn't have any way to counter that. In this world, we understand we've received forgiveness, cleansing, justification, newness of life. But in the world to come, which is the real point, we receive an inheritance. So that's what we're kind of got our feet on the ground there. The inheritance is the ultimate. Jesus didn't die to solve your marriage. Now, I, I, we really want everybody to have happy marriages. I'm serious about this. But Jesus didn't have to die for that to happen. Moses could have given you that. God wants you in the glory. There's an inheritance that's reserved there, especially for those that come out from the earth overcomers. It's a special inheritance. No angel ever had an inheritance like this. Oh, it's a joint heir with Christ. We're going to sit, Jesus said, they'll sit with me in my throne as I sat down in my Father's throne. So how's that? That's what we're, that's what we're targeting. Now, in order to develop this fully, I first of all want to mention a, sa a sanctification in which you pay absolutely no, play no part. I'm going to explain why you played no part. A sanctification that has nothing to do with anything you do. Six times in Scripture, we read statements about this. 1 Corinthians 1 2. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth, which church he wrote about sanctification. To them that are sanctified. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, he had listed a catalog of dreadful sins. He says, such were some of you. But you are washed, you are sanctified. Hebrews 2, 11, both he that sanctifieth and they which are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call you brethren. Hebrews 10.10, by which will, which was a, is the new covenant, by which will we are sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The are. This is a sanctification in which you played no part, not one, not one aspect of your activity is in this sanctification. Jude 1.1, 1, 1, Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, and some of the others correctly translate it, preserved for Jesus Christ. That is, you were sanctified. You were, you were called by God. You were accepted before you were called. And then you were sanctified after you were, after you were called. <coughs> now, the truth of the matter is, as I have said, that you have no part in this sanctification. This sanctification... I'm, I'm not just being repetitive. This sanctification is something accomplished entirely without your input. 
It was achieved by Christ's death, not Christ's death plus anything else. Actually, this relates to God's overall purpose, as stated in Romans 8, 29 and 30. Now, this is lofty, I understand, but you've got to think that you got to think big. You remember that text that says, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. For, for, Whom he called him, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. Whom he foreknew, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. And whom he predestinated, he called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. And you didn't have anything to do with any one of those. That's something God did. Not God and you, or God and the preacher, or God and anybody else. Amen. Now our text is talking about that, that activity. So let me develop this for a while. This suggests to us that until all sin was taken away, the Lamb of God taketh away the sin of the world. He come to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Until all sin was taken away, no single sin could be forgiven. Everybody until Jesus died, they bore the weight of a defiled conscience. So sin in mass was put away by Jesus Christ. Or to say it another way, the iniquities of us all were laid upon him. This sanctification legitimatizes salvation. This makes it right for God to do initial work, maintaining work, and find the delivering work. God's so holy, so holy, he couldn't put his hand on you without you dying. There had to be a just reason so that no charge would be brought against him there had to be a just reason for him to carry out what had to be done for you to get in and what had to be done for you to stay in and what had to be done for you to come into the inheritance. God had to be both just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. It's Romans 3.25. Salvation has to be right. When the angels see it, they had to reckon this is, this, is, this is right. It can't be a concession of some kind. It can't be God ignoring this or that. Salvation has to be right before it even starts, all right? This sanctification that I read about, mentioned six times, that sanctification legitimatizes the work of salvation. That sanctification makes it right for God to proceed with the plan. Well, that's an arresting thought. I, I kind of urge you to think about that for a while. Well, let's see about some of the things that it legitimatizes. People had to be drawn to Christ. Jesus said, don't make him come unto me except the Father that has sent me draw him. That's what he said. So I don't believe that. Well, start believing it. Just start believing it because that's the truth. Join him. He even said, all that the Father giveth me will come to me. That's what he said. This sanctification justifies God in drawing people before they're in, before they have a conscious awareness of what's going on, there's this inclination. I will arise and go to Jesus. What caused that to happen? This is the work of God. Why did God do it? Because you 
the, the people that were going to be, this is going to happen to would were, were sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. The people. That phrase is used in the text. The people. The people. Then there's a the convincing of sin. The Holy Spirit's got to kick into gear. Holy Spirit convinces of sin and righteousness and judgment to come of sin because they don't believe on me. I mean, it, if you don't believe on Christ, you, you're not trusting Christ, you're not depending on Christ, you're not listening to Christ, you don't do what Christ says. It's the Holy Spirit, oh, he can convict you of that. How is he able to do that? Because already God's justified in in taking this role, working with people before they're in. That's, so the, the people had to be sanctified. That's why he died without the gate to sanctify the people. What people? Everybody in the world? No. We're not talking on that level now. There is a level where he died for all, but that's, that's down, that's a lower level. This is the level up here where known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Uh, before the plan was ever started, it was all mapped out, down to the detail level. This is why God's governing this process because the people were sanctified. This is why when Paul and company were out preaching, they, they, they tried to go into Asia. That was a fruitful territory. The Holy Spirit wouldn't let them go. No. Well, they went later because the seven churches were in Asia, so later they, they did go, but not then. Not, in, not then. It wasn't time. Then they said to go into Bithynia. Holy Spirit said they couldn't go there. See? Why not? See, God's governing this program. He's proceeding without any kind of reluctance or disappointment because the people have already been sanctified for this work. Not sanctified in the sense of already pure. That's, that's going to come later. But sanctified so that God can work with them and on them and in them. And then there's a granting of repentance. Peter reported to the brethren there at Jerusalem. They had a, a special meeting because they were having trouble Accepting the, accepting the conversion of the Gentiles. They weren't, this was not clear to them yet. This is at least a decade after Pentecost. And Peter, he told them what had happened, what God had done to them, how he had formed them to go preach to them, and how they received the same gift as he did. And so the, well, the people said, well, then God has granted him repentance unto life. Like, have you ever heard an evangelist say something like that? Have you? Someone reported a conversion. Have you ever in your lifetime ever heard anybody say something like that? Well, you, you might have. You thank God if you have, but that's what they said. Why did he grant repentance? The people had been sanctified, see, for the work. What about being given to believe? Philippians 1.29 says unto you it was given, it was given to believe. Hmm? How, was it God, how was God able to give them to believe? It wasn't because they were suitable. They weren't, they weren't clean yet. But they'd been like set apart for this work of salvation to be wrought. Or what about opening their hearts? Like Lydia did in Acts 16, 14. The Lord opened her heart so she could respond. How, how was God able to do that? The work of salvation had been legitimatized. Nobody could lay any fault to God for doing this. I hope I'm not being too clumsy in declaring this because this is one more precious truth. Amen. That before he started fulfilling his purpose... He cleaned out everything so that nobody could lay a charge against him for what he was doing. 
I mentioned the drawing. How about, how about God working in you to perfect you? It's found in 1 Peter 5. Working you to perfect you. You're not perfect yet, but God is still, how is he able to do that? Because the work of salvation itself has been justified and, and made legitimate and made lawful. What about keeping you from falling? The Lord's able to keep you from falling. How is he able to do that when you're in an imperfect state? It's because the work of salvation was sanctified when Jesus died. It's like when Jesus died, got back to heaven, the call went out, begin the work. This work doesn't depend on the church. It doesn't. Why then, Bible, there'd be one man did more than the accumulative churches of Joplin done in 50 years. It's because they were in the flow of the work that had been sanctified. <coughs> and how about making people stand? Making a weak believer, weak, a weak believer is a believer that doesn't understand the reason for things. So they make decisions that's based on an inadequate base of information. In Romans 14, 4, it says, God will make that person stand. He'll make him stand. If you know someone like this, needs to be made to stand. They're a little wobbly, you know. He can make, how, how can he do this? Because the work of salvation has been legitimatized. It was by the sanctification of Jesus Christ. This can only be done effectively where there's the response of faith. When God works, there, it must be, there must be the reciprocal response of faith. you got to believe that this has been done. If God forgives your sins, you got to believe. Belief is like the hand of the soul. It hears the promises of God. It take hold of them. So all this is activated by faith. The result of this is that a, a person lives a sanctified life and fulfills the mandate. This is the mandate from heaven. This is the mandate. Now, let's suggest be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation is the flow of your life. Your life is talking. This isn't verbal conversation. It's living talking. Be holy in all manner of the way you live. How's that going to happen? God will set this up if you just let him do it. Amen. He'll set this up in your heart. He'll give you repentance. He'll, he'll give you to believe. He'll establish strength and say, he'll hold off. Hold off. The day. Leave, leave him alone. He'll stay the powers of darkness. Whatever you need to get, kind of get up your speed, he'll give it to you. Why? Because the work, see, has been legitimatized. I want to take a moment here to further define uh, sanctification. Now, this will be the effect of the sanctification I talked about. The sanctification wrought by Jesus on the cross of our, in our text is like that big bottle of oil that widow woman used. She came to the prophet Elisha. Her husband was a prophet. And she was in debt, and she didn't have anything to pay off the debt, and so she, her sons were going to have to work till they paid off the debt. And she asked the prophet to help her. She said, she didn't have anything. Well, she said, God, you got something. What do you got? What do you have in the house? She said, I got a bottle of oil. We'll use that. 
That's the first thing you do to go all your neighbors and borrow vessels, all sizes, from little to big. Fill up your house from wall to wall. Fill it up with these bottles. She did that. She filled them. Right, she got all in there. He says, start pouring. She took that one bottle, filled up the first bottle. The bottle hadn't diminished at all. In which she filled up every single one of those bottles out of that one bottle. The sanctification on the cross that we read about is the big bottle. Your personal participation, that's the little bottles. That's filled with that. If that first sanctification was not effective, your sanctification couldn't be effective because God wouldn't be in the thing, you see? Sanctification... <coughs> Includes purifying or being washed, as First Corinthians six eleven says, or being purged, as Hebrews ten twenty two says, or having your hearts purified by faith, as Acts fifteen nine says. See, that's like a facet of sanctification. That's not the whole of it. It's like a like a jewel facet of it, purity. Nobody who's impure is sanctified. Not in the sense we're talking about now. And you know, Paul says, I, I write, Peter said, I write to stir up your pure minds. See, pure minds. That's an aspect of sanctification. That's 2 Peter 3, 1. And those that have this hope in him, that's Christ, and the hope is in the person, those who have this hope in him purifies themselves. They don't need a lot of exhortation. They don't have to take a course or a slideshow. Hope will do that for you. That's this all involved in sanctification. Purity. Separation. Sanctification. We've had a lot of talk about this. I'll just mention it. Separation. By nature, what do you call the twins that are joined together? Huh? Siamese. Siamese. See, when you're born by nature, you're a Siamese twin with Adam. That's the way it is. When you come to Christ, there's a circumcision of Christ. Huh? Separates that. And when you're separate inside, you can get separate outside. See, there's a lot of people trying to get separate outside that haven't got separate inside. How is it that Jesus would use that circumcision like that? What would most of us didn't even know he did it? I was in Christ for a while before I knew there was such a thing as circumcision to Christ. And I'd read the Bible, but we just didn't hear anything about that. The work was done independent of your knowledge and understanding because the work had been legitimatized. God did the work because the work had, the people he's going to work on have been set apart for the work. That's, that's the point. <laughs> Separated. In this world, therefore, those who are in Christ are strangers, pilgrims, sojourners. You don't want to gather around you a lot of the earth so it's hard for you to get out. And this is easy to do in our world. Separation. Then there's a mindset that goes along with sanctification. The mindset, that's a mental attitude or inclination. It's a default way of thinking. Everybody has a mindset. That when they don't know what to do, they default to a <laughs> certain way of thinking. They may say, well, I made a mistake, right? I did not. No, they went to the default. When you're sanctified, you default to God's side. Amen. That's a default mindset. You set your affection on things above. It's a, it's a mindset. 
You seek the things that are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. That's a mindset. See, that's a mind. That's a mindset. <coughs> and they know, they know they're not their own. This is sanctified people. They know they're not their own. They know they've been bought with a price. And you're not your own. You do not have a right to just do what you want. Amen. Jesus bought you. Amen. He bought you because buying you was a legitimate was legitimatized by this sanctification I talked about. But now somebody has to tell you this. I I don't think a person can arrive at this conclusion on their own. I don't think that's the way God set things up. He didn't set things up for independent living. To the body of Christ, that's one of the roles now. That's one of the roles they got to do. They have to remind people, you've been bought with a price. And this is a good master that bought you. He's going to give you good things. And a lot of good things. When this master here, we got to talk about riches and abundance and full measure, that overflowing, and that's the kind of thing we got to talk about with this master. So they know they're not their own. Now I will confess to you that, in my judgment, the professed church has not done well in this area. It's went to the world to help them solve their problems. Problems with their people, problems with their finances, this, that, and the other. But they go down to Egypt for help. But that work has not been legitimatized. Getting help, moral or spiritual help, from someone other than Jesus is unlawful. Amen. It's a crime. It's a sin because all the resources have been given to Christ. And as a believer, you have access to all the resources, and there isn't anything these resources don't cover. You're complete in him. But until you know it, see, I, would, I, I didn't know this for a long time. When I found out, I said, I'm going to start cashing in the vouchers. I want, I want what Jesus Christ has given you. you. You can have this. Because why? Because the work has been legitimatized. You don't have there. See, so some things you don't have to ask if, thy, if it's your will. You don't say, forgive my sins if it's your will. Uh, lead me in the way everlasting if it's your will. It, that's the wrong thing to say in these prayers. Show me thyself if, if you will. You see, this... <laughs> These things are all resident in Christ. And everybody in heaven knows it. Earth's got to be caught up to speed. That if you ask God for something he said he, gave, he will give, all heaven knows that's right. You did the right thing. And God's not going to withhold it. He's not. <coughs> now we... This, I don't want to dwell on this too long because it's kind of depressing, but there's an accommodation to weak spiritual status. The church is accommodating to it. So they, they cut down the, their meetings, and what meetings they have, they fill it up with stuff that they say is from God, but it's, op it's open to question, you know. And they cut things short, and they don't meet often, and they're conceding to people that don't want the blessing. I say, it's time to start deferring to the people who want the blessing. Amen. And if it's not many, it won't stay that way long. Because the work's been made legitimate. Now let me remind you that this is the day of salvation. Jesus stood up in a hometown synagogue and he said, the Spirit of God's upon me 
He sent me to announce liberty to the captives. See, there are, there are no prison doors that are, that got prisons that have doors on them. <laughs> I've come to announce the opening of the prison doors and setting free those that are bound. Every moral, every moral and spiritual prison is doorless. The king has taken off the doors like Samson took the gates of Gaza. Amen. They're just not there. But nobody knew it until it was announced by the Lord of glory. <clears throat> he said, for the, this is the day of salvation. This is the acceptable time. Now today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow is a day of salvation. Oh, no, no. Maybe you think you missed it. Yesterday was a day of salvation. No, no. Today is a day of salvation. Well, what's that mean? That means you can get everything that salvation promises. Everything. Doesn't make any difference what it is. You, but your faith is the, is the key. <coughs> now let me... Uh, close by reminding you of the effectiveness of faith, what faith can do. Yeah. We receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Galatians 3.14. We're children of God by faith. Galatians 3.26. We're justified by faith. Romans 5.2. We stand yeah. by faith. 2 Corinthians 1.24. We're saved by faith, Ephesians 2.8. Christ dwells in us by faith, Ephesians 3.17. We're kept by the power of God through faith, 1 Peter 1.5. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It's the victory. Now, what do you need that faith won't give you? Faith is the master key. It can get everything. So I call you. I wish I could do it more capably. But I call you to a life of sanctification. Amen. Sanctification is realized through faith. You'll be satisfied. Amen. You won't be disappointed. He that believeth on me will not be disappointed. That's, what, that's the promise now. That's the promise. You won't be disappointed. You say, well, it seems like it seems too good to be true. Well, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Amen. What are you going to do? And all of a sudden, Peter come into the temple, and there's, there's, a, there's a beggar there, a lame man sitting on the wall. And he saw me and said, he'll ask for some alms. Peter says, we don't have any money. <laughs> well, what kind of church is he from? <laughs> We're talking about a lead apostle here. We're not talking about an average person. We don't have any money. It's over and gold have right now, but I do. But I do have something. Yeah. And what I have, I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. Get up and walk. Amen. All right. What's that man able to do? You want to get right down technical about it. All he could do is want to get up. But when he wanted to get up, <laughs> the king said, give him some faith. And he got up and he not only walked, he stared up a ruckus by leaping and shouting in the temple. All right, some of the things that you... Uh, it's your own business, but there may be things that you feel you, you should do. But it seems like you a bit too challenging at this time. I'm admonish you to do your ask God to help you in this. He'll help you to not think this way. If you have to say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I believe this applies to every every everything that man wrestles with from infirmity to whatever if you can believe if you can believe you can do it 
And everybody that Jesus healed had faced this same problem. The circumstance they had didn't look like they could do what he said, stretch out that withered head. Yeah, it didn't look like this is, but he willed to do it. He stretched. <laughs> this is how it'll happen to you. When you have faith enough to respond yes to Christ and you extend yourself, it won't be very long. You'll have the faith and you'll end up doing the very thing that you thought you couldn't do. Amen. Why? <laughs> because the work of salvation has been legitimatized. You don't have to meet a whole lot of qualifications before the work gets underway. Jesus has covered that base. Now, I'll tell you what I seek, and I ask you to join me in it. I won't be satisfied till I hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servants. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Come on, enter now. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. Now, all you have to do to hear those words is keep the faith. Amen. And if you think you don't have enough reason to, the work has been legitimatized by Christ's sanctification. I thank you for being Amen. patient.